Gio, I know you've been busy with Bench Talk, but I appreciate you producing Park Bench and booking it. That's no very nice My of pleasure. you. So let's go over the list. Okay. Right? Yeah. Were you able to get uh, Shirley Jones? Nope. Tom Jones? Nope. Tommy Lee Jones? Nope. The Jonas Brothers? Nope. James Earl? Nope. You didn't even let me get it out. You're nope. saying no to everything now. What about uh, Dakota Fanning? Nope. Dakota Johnson? Nope. Don Johnson? He's cool, but nope. John Travolta? Nope. John Turturro? Nope, but we're working on it. No, no, John Turturro, he's right here. John, hey, how are you? How you doing? Oh, man? my God. He's, this is what I, that's good. You got him. How you doing, John? Nice hey. to meet you. How are you? Yeah. Geo? No, it's first time I ever first met time we meet oh, him. Oh, really? So you're saying well, that you didn't, of your work. you didn't call okay. him then? You didn't call him? I tried. That's fine. John and I live in the same neighborhood. Oh, so are you? Yeah, but, yeah. but we never see each other. We never see each other. Airports, we see each other. I saw, yeah, I saw you at an airport a couple of times. Premieres. Premieres. Film festivals. Well, you go to the bagel store, though, right? Which one? The bagel hole? La ba no. Oh, La Bagel Delight? La Bagel Delight. I go to La Bagel Delight. I also yeah. like the bagel hole. Oh, I see. They have the smaller bagels. I think I would like the La Bagel better than the uh, bagel hole. Bagel hole. <laughs> I'm going to take you to La Bagel Delight. Sounds good. We're going to go yeah. there. Well, how come you guys don't ever call each other and meet up at La Bagel? Well, it's, you know, he's on one you're schedule, busy, I'm on another schedule. It's true. That's We're true. busy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's hard to uh, yeah. hook up with actors. We did hook up once, though. And <laughs> one, our characters hooked up in okay. Miller's Crossing. Yes, we, we had a hookup in Miller's Crossing, and the tragedy of that is that you actually never see Bernie and Mink together. We actually had a love affair. Yeah. Okay. But we never see any of this. And Steve and I have been lobbying for many years to, to do this missing scene. I mean, I think the Coen brothers are geniuses. Right. But that was an oversight. <laughs> Absolutely. That was an oversight. It would have been one of the great scenes. And they wouldn't listen to us. I spoke really fast, and Steve yeah. spoke even faster. So we were thinking about if we would have had a scene together, it would have just like, it would have been like that. So you is know? that it the you know? thing? Like, is it better to talk slower to each other, or you just spit it out real quick? You're thinking about screen time. Right. Okay. See, he's on the other side, so he has a close-up. We have a two-shot. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I worked with an actor once who was always going like this to me. <laughs> so my whole uh, theory was working with this guy was to sidestep when he would make that move. I would like make, you know. So, so he would come for you. Yeah, I would come for you, <laughs> yeah. and I would go the other way. So here, here, no, you're good. All right. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. No, so I want to kind of take yeah. you here, so no one sees you. So I'm in a close-up. So he'd go. Like, you know, like, you know. <laughs> and then you would be in a single. See that? See that? I, learned, I learned a new trick now. I learned a new right. trick. So your brother Nick is an actor, and your cousin Aida is an actor. As kids, did you guys talk about that? Like, was that a real dream? Like, you know, it was like something that you, you fantasized about if you were a big movie lover. Right. I, I loved the movie. Right. Uh, but I never, I never knew anybody in the movies. And right. it wasn't until I started going to see plays that I thought, oh, well. Maybe this is even feasible. Did you take acting classes then? And when you... I went to New Paltz, I, I oh, went, I went New to Paltz. the theater okay. uh, department. They had some really good teachers there, and I, and I, the first play I ever did was One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. But I was very green. But uh, you must have had uh, ambition or something, because you actually got into Raging Bull. I like, was, you didn't have an agent. You didn't have, you didn't I had have no nothing. So I had nothing. You... I was doing a showcase, Michael Bartolucco, all these guys from New Pulse had graduated, and one of the guys ran the West Bank. He was yes. there, right? Yes, And yes. so Bartolucco did all these plays, and then he had to go back to work, so I replaced him. And then we heard that De Niro was going to come to the play, and then, of course, Bartolucco said, De Niro's wow. coming. He said, you know, you're out. I'm, 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 I'm playing my part. You get the hell out. You know, I was like, well, OK, but, you know. I said, I'm going to still work at the theater. And they said, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll so I sold him tickets that night. I sold, but I made him pay, I remember. He said, he came, it was $2, like a right. dollar. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, said, yeah. that'll be $2. I didn't, get, I didn't comp him. Right. Then I sat next to him, and he liked Michael. Right. So he said, uh, I'd like to bring this guy in for an interview, Michael. And he said, and that guy who was at the, at the, the door, you know, with the T-shirt with the on, he said, that guy was interesting and looking. So we got like an interview, and I knew the book because my dad was a boxer. So we started reading the book. I said, why don't we adapt the scene for it? So we went in there, and Marty was 
very nervous, and he was like, well, we, can't, we, don't, we don't have script. You know, I, I don't understand how, how you guys can have a team. We don't have a script. There's no script. There's no script. I mean, yeah. And Bob was like, you know, like this. He was right. like, let them do the scene, let them do the scene, you know? So we had to move this table, and I remember all four of us had to pick the table. It was glass, but it had no bottom. Like, the bottom was just that. <laughs> and we were so all nothing. moving oh, like man. this in the circle. And we finally moved the table, and we did this, like, on the waterfront scene. And so that began this journey of they kept calling us back. And I was so nervous the day that I was on the set that I moved my head about 20 times. Like, <laughs> in the like scene? This, in the scene like this. Hey, Jake, how you doing? Like, I'm like, I'm like, you know, I was so, you know, nervous. Like, to this day, says, yeah, I remember you guys did that scene. How do you divide your time between, like, because now you're, you've been directing a lot. I've been, uh, I directed, uh, I think, five things. Yeah. Yeah. And oh. I'm trying to, I'd like to direct more. got Woody more. Allen to do uh, Fading Gigolo. I did. I, I, I was That guy, I was he able hardly to... ever does anything else besides his own movies. So I have did... to share that with my barber. You have to share that with your barber? Yeah, because he cuts Woody's hair. Oh, oh. He cuts my so, hair. Right. He, he kind of brought us together. Wow. And then I went and met Woody, and uh, I said, I don't have a script. <laughs> so then he decided, he said, will you write it, and I'll give you my criticism. Were they overall notes or mainly about his character? Overall. Overall notes? For everything. And then uh, I would rewrite it and show it to him, and then uh, it took a long time, and then finally right. he said, oh, this is getting good. He's tough, you know, he's, yeah. he's, he's, because, you know, he comes from the school of, uh, of stand-up, you know, he's a comedian. Right. Right. So he has that kind of, you know, he's, he, he, he wants you to bring it. It was weird the first day, yeah. you know, telling him, like, yeah. Okay. Tone it down, Woody. <laughs> <laughs> a, little, a little less. Yeah. A little less now. Oh, Woody says, you know, I start broad and work towards the unacceptable. <laughs> he goes, you know, uh, you know, but he's, uh, he's a formidable guy, man. Yeah. He's really a formidable And so it was a uh, big experience right. Right, to work with. We're in the circus business here. You know, we never know. <laughs> no, it's true. You know, people always go, what are you going to do, right? I mean, yeah. it's like... Well, whatever's good, you know. Speaking of which, I want you to be honest with me. Go ahead. You, know, you weren't just walking through the park, right? I mean, where, we, are you here I, to you do? Know, you know, I actually was. There he is. Gonna go. John. Hey, Michael, how you doing? What's going on? It's good was, to see you. Man. Nice to see you. I was on my way to come to see you, but I know, no, I was I'm intercepted so, yeah. by your brother. I noticed. Yeah, I noticed. I, I noticed. Know, you like you. Sorry, I didn't. <laughs> 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 uh, now we used to wrestle. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, right? Really good. But you never told me why they call this place uh, La Bagel Delight. You know, I've been coming here for 20 years, and I don't know. What if we go inside and just ask them? Good idea. Might be able to get you a job here, too. Yeah, I could use the extra work. Let's bring the bench in. Good idea. I think, I think they would appreciate that. All right, got it. All right, good. What's your favorite bagel? My favorite bagel is an everything bagel with scallion, cream cheese, and tomato. I can see that. Everything's my favorite. Everything, good. <laughs> hey. Guys, can I help you over here? Uh, you guys comfortable? Yeah, this right. is nice. Like this? I hope you don't mind us bringing the bench in here. You know, I do a well, show well, called thanks. Park Bench. This is Geo. Geo, I, hey, let me help you out. All right, yeah, you all right? Good. Can we meet some of the guys who work here? Because, you know, it would be important to see right. if Geo would fit in with, like, these guys. Right. Hey, Steve, nice to see you. Nice hey, to meet you. Geo. Geo. How did you come up with the name La Bagel Delight? It was actually my partner's mother-in-law that came up with the name. She wanted to class up the place a little bit, come up with a fancy French name, La Bagel Delight. We all said, OK, why not? Let's go with that name. There's a story that I heard, and it's written in uh, this book, Brooklyn Follies. You know this book? Yes. You know this book? I wish if I had uh, my copy. I actually I... never leave home without one. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Wow. I'm, I'm very impressed that you have this. Um, there's a passage in here. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, I found it. One Sunday morning, I went into a crowded deli with the absurd name of La Bagel Delight. Absurd. I was intending to ask for a cinnamon raisin bagel, but the word caught in my mouth and came out as Cinnamon Reagan. 
Without missing a beat, the young guy behind the counter answered, sorry, we don't have any of those. How about a pumper Nixon instead? I want to verify this story. I want to bring Siri out first <laughs> because yes. this, I think this is a big scandal that we are going to get to the bottom of. You, you are. Did this story actually happen to Paul? It did not. It happened to me. I thought it was so incredibly witty, I have to say. So Paul did ask me if he could use this story. Paul, <laughs> get in here. <laughs> I'm here to verify that Paul, what Paul. Siri is saying is the truth. I took it from her, but with her permission. How often do you use real dialogue that, that you hear? Very rarely. Very uh, in rarely. fact, this is one of the maybe two or three times in my life that I've ever used something in a work of fiction that was really said by a real person. So. Was it hard for you to give it up? Well, I just want to mention that there is a literary antecedent, which is that I did put that in an essay of my own about New York yes. that was published in a German newspaper Sorry. before the Brooklyn Follies. Yes. yes, So it's been roaming around. So we're international now. <laughs> yeah, that's Absolutely. right. That's true. Yeah. Yes. Well, you're Absolutely. already French. Yeah. So <laughs> sure. By giving it up, I was giving it to the world. You're and, it out and there. I was getting it out there, but also really um, not taking credit for having experienced it firsthand. But I freely <laughs> acknowledge that it was a gift for my wife. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I I'm curious, what's it like, you know, when you have two writers in the family? Everyone thinks it's a problem that two writers live together. Right. To me, it's uh, only got positives to it because her criticisms are really essential. And I don't think there's been a time in all these years when Sirius said, well, I'm not sure about that sentence or that paragraph. You might want to rethink it. I've always rethought it. I've always made changes. And I read all a series yes. of work, too. It's, it's, so you, you it, it goes it both heart. ways. Yeah. yeah, it goes both ways. So would you like a cinnamon Reagan bagel? It's on me. Sure. <laughs> I think he's well, it's on him, actually. Right. It's on him. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thanks, Steve.